Today, I want to talk about an experimental new feature I've been working on for Cthulhu.jl. And what I've um, been asking myself is basically taking what's great about Cthulhu.jl, what's missing to make it a better, more general purpose debugger. Um, in this talk, I will assume some basic knowledge um, about lowered and typed code. Um, if you need to uh, recap on that, um, I can only highly recommend um, Tim Holdy and Shuhei's um, workshop last year about improving engineering quality and latency. What is Cthulhu.jl? Um, from the on the README, it says it can help you debug type inference issues by recursively showing the code typed output um, to find the exact point where inference gave up, messed up, or did something unexpected. Using the Cthulhu interface, you can debug type inference problems faster. So basically, it gives you an insight into how Julia's compiler sees your code. And um, if you want to be more formal about it, it will show you the results of abstract interpretation that's built into the compiler, like um, evaluating types, constants, constraints, um, statically. Um, it will show you that alongside the lowered code. What would um, Cthulhu do for um, a simple function like this? This is the um, Babylonian square root algorithm. We have a while loop in there. Um, to Cthulhu.jl, it looks like this. We say these scary looking unions, because I was kind of sneaky and put an integer in there instead of a floating point. But you can see different things like these slots, these single um, side assignment variables. Um, constants on the right hand side here. These were um, statically evaluated. We have um, conditional chums. This one says go to block four if um, percent eight evaluates to false. Um, and here um, we see in red um, an inferred union type. Um, all, but these types were in, inferred to float 64, which is a concrete type. And we have, um, of course, return statement as you are used to from regular Julia code. Now, what makes a debugger different to Cthulhu? Um, so a debugger's primary, uh, primary purpose is usually finding logic bugs. And that's what they're really good at. Um, whereas um, Cthulhu, um, the primary objective is more to inspect inference issues rather than logic in your program. Um, debuggers or um, debugger.jl also doesn't use any of the static type inference. Um, the Julia compiler um, um, works um, on um, and is completely dynamic, whereas Cthulhu actually is, extracts this static type information from Julia's compiler. Debugger will just execute your code, um, usually line by line. Whereas Cthulhu um, is only allowed to evaluate code that's pure in rotation mark, so that doesn't have any side effects, which could affect the execution of the program. No, um, there's in debugger.jl, you can't really take a step back as due to the aforementioned side effects, because code that's already been executed might have caused irreversible side effects. Whereas in Cthulhu, you're just able to poke around um, any parts of the program at will. Um, debugger is usually quite straightforward um, to a newcomer to Julia, but um, the limitation is that you only really see one step at a time. Whereas Cthulhu, you see everyone, everything at once. But um, that can also be really intimidating, and especially if you've worked on code use, making use of AD, um, this can get messy very, very quickly. Now, as a Greedy Julia user, um, that begs the question, can we somehow get the best of both worlds? And now I want to um, basically give you a demo of what I've been working on. Here we have this um, same function again. But now what we'll do is we will pass this eval equals true um, to the at descent micro. And what that gives us, we can see it's already um, evaluated like the um, first constants. And uh, we have this little cursor, which will allow us to um, actually evaluate our code alongside the output from Cthulhu. What I do is um, I press N, 
And in this case, it isn't really interesting because um, it's been um, statically evaluated anyways, but um, stacking it through a bit more. Now we can see the result of squaring percent two, which was um, our original four, which is of course 16. Then we subtract um, the four again, take the absolute value, and evaluate this condition. Now, something that's sometimes um, a bit annoying in Cthulhu is, for example, this calls like um, minus of um, an integer first argument, and the second argument is the union of a float 64 in 64. The difficulty with this is that this isn't just one single method, because there is actually like one method for int 64 and float 64, and there's another method for int 64 and int 64. And um, normally in Cthulhu, you have to manually um, choose which one you would now like to step into. But now with this new feature, we just um, press enter, and it uh, automatically knows that like in this um, certain evaluation, we have two integers. So it will give us the method for two integers, which we'll call this internal subint function. That's already quite interesting. Uh, we can also, if you um, want to trace through the control flow and then um, see where um, our um, integer turns into a float 64, we can see that happens here. And if we now do another loop iteration and step through it, we see this instead of the integer 16, this now becomes 6.25, and the float 64 starts to propagate all through the program. Um, for a more interesting example, we can look at um, a zygote function, and we can already see that this is a ton of lowered code. So if we just like take a couple of steps, we can already see some more interesting things. So these start out as empty vectors, and we can see that um, these are tuples, and we already see like what um, the first part of the tuple is. And taking a bit more steps, um, we see how um, everything propagates through our program. And once we get to our pushes, we can already observe that um, our vectors that were previously empty are now not empty anymore. So there's um, these um, psycho.back um, things in there. Um, it's a bit um, hard to explain all the internals of zygote, of course, but um, this really helps if you're debugging specific issues. Thank you for listening. You can check out what I just demoed on GitHub or simply do at Cthulhu hashtag SDS um, work in progress Julia interpreter. So give it a try and I hope um, you'll enjoy it. Thanks.